Are ordinary 2.5-inch SATA SSDs still relevant, or are they a thing of the past when considering that M.2 SSDs are slowly but surely taking over? 2.5-inch drives do indeed have their disadvantages, but also noteworthy, obvious perks in my opinion. Today I'm putting the relatively inexpensive model by the brand Orico to the test. The exact model name is Y20, and I'm taking a look at the 2TB version. Although this SSD comes in at capacities ranging from 128GB to all the way up to 4TB. Currently on Amazon, the 2TB version goes for about 110 US dollars, whereas 1TB would cost you give or take $60 or less, depending if you apply coupons or not. These prices sure are attractive, I'm not gonna lie, even though the competition is tough. Sure, to some Orco will be considered a no-name brand. To me and certainly a few others, however, it is a familiar brand that generally offers decent adapters and hubs at reasonable prices. It appears now they are also getting into SSDs. So I expect nothing less from today's Y20 SSD, although I could be wrong. We are definitely not just going to take a look at the performance data, speed, etc., but also at the drive's internals to determine which controller and components actually are being used and what their respective quality tier is. Because it's far too easy to get ripped off when it comes to SSDs. I was a victim of that myself a few years ago when I bought the next best renowned Crucial SSD without doing any research beforehand. So keep your eyes open before buying an SSD and always remain skeptical. Enough rambling around. Inside the packaging we find the actual drive itself, as well as some paper documentation, that's all. In terms of build quality, the casing is made entirely out of plastic, as one would come to expect in this price range, however I'm not complaining. The aesthetics are kept minimalistic and simple for those that wish to display their drive in certain PC cases, that's perfectly okay with me. As far as the form factor is concerned, such 2.5 inch drives have the advantage that they are still quite widespread and common and therefore offer great compatibility, although the trend is now clearly heading towards more compactness, thus M.2. This is particularly beneficial for mobile devices, where saving space is a big priority. A drawback of 2.5 inch SATA SSDs would be the limitation of the SATA 6 gigabit per second interface. The manufacturer specifies a fairly usual maximum read and write speed of 480 and 500 megabytes per second, respectively. The 2TB model sporting a TBW rating of 300TB, which is not particularly a lot, to put it mildly. The drive therefore cannot withstand a lot of write cycles, or the manufacturer is just being overly cautious and simply doesn't want to promise too much and rather prefers playing it safe. We've seen that multiple times. The main reason for the fairly low TBW is undoubtedly the QLC NAND flash memory used, which obviously isn't heavily advertised. This NAND memory is generally considered to be the cheapest type and is definitely inferior to TLC NAND or more so MLC in terms of durability and performance if you will. But QLC based SSDs are becoming more and more popular due to their low price even with Samsung SSDs. I, on the other hand, am a firm advocate of TLC SSDs and I stand my ground. Now before we turn to the performance values, here's a quick look inside the Y20. Typical these days, the PCB is kept really compact, even for a capacity of 2TB. At the heart of the Y20 SSD is the Realtek slash RayMX RM1135T controller, which should be tiered as a low-end part. Still, it should be decent enough for the basics. Both sides of the PCB are fitted with QLC NAND by Intel. Unfortunately, this is a DRAM-less drive. This could have significant drawbacks. In short, the lack of DRAM means that a very simple PCB and controller can be used. The impact of no DRAM can for instance greatly impact random writes and the consistency of those. However, for many users who do not need to write to the SSD a lot on a daily basis and do not need to experience constant maximum performance, a DRAM-less SSD should still be okay. Nonetheless, I will deduct a point for the lack of DRAM. Test setup. Testing will be carried out with my usual test system for hardware of this type. Performance. Let's get started with Crystal Diskmark. 
it quickly becomes obvious that SATA SSDs tend to show roughly the same performance over the last few years now, regardless of the actual manufacturer. Nonetheless, you can make out that the Orico Y20 slightly lags behind those other models shown in the charts, especially when it comes to writing. A similar picture emerges in the AutoDisk benchmark. The read speeds are decent, but when it comes to the writes, it falls slightly behind the competition, which is probably due to the cheap controller used and lack of DRAM. Compared to mechanical hard drives with moving parts inside them, however, today's SSD is to be considered a rocket. But that's not exactly a fair comparison, is it? When it comes to the final test, AS SSD benchmark, the Y20's behavior repeats itself here too, although I would not call these bad results by any means. In terms of speed, it is a perfectly fine and usable SATA SSD. The IOPS for the random read and writes do, unsurprisingly, drop significantly though. One of the slowest SSDs I have owned for a long time, especially in terms of reading. When it comes to access times though, we get a mixed result. For reading, the access time is quite respectable. For writing, it is rather below average. All the results in the AS SSD benchmark put today's Y20 SSD in the last place among SSDs, rightfully so. But on the other hand, do not forget about this drive's price point. I have intentionally left out much more powerful M.2 NVMe SSDs from the charts, because if you start comparing against those, regular SATA SSDs simply don't stand a chance. Even those really slow NVMe drives with slower interfaces reach well above 1500 megabytes per second when reading. In terms of price, we are looking at a whole different tier though. Nonetheless, to satisfy your curiosity, and admittedly mine too, I have created charts that include NVMe drives. It's kinda crazy how far we've come with SSDs. But to be fair, very few of us notice an actual difference between SATA SSDs and lightning fast NVMe drives, at least for now. Although there are certain applications and game titles out there promising faster loading times with NVMe drives. Conclusion. The Orico Y20 is undoubtedly a budget SSD. It is in the lower end tier, even though I would state it offers sufficient performance for the average consumer. Anyone who basically demands more from an SSD and has to rely on good stable writes should avoid today's Y20, because the controller used and the lack of DRAM paired with QLC NAND do not prove to be the best combination. Nonetheless, for normal, ordinary applications and use cases, I can recommend the Orico Y20 for the average consumer, especially if you're on a tight budget. What are your thoughts on ordinary 2.5-inch SATA SSDs? Are you still buying such drives, or are you explicitly using M.2 nowadays? If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, or alternatively, leave me a big fat dislike. With that in mind, thank you all for watching, and until the next one.